Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Alex, and today's Friday. Now, I did say that I was going to take a two to three day break. Um, had to do the video all over because I hate when um, I hate when people almost said the wrong word. Um, I hate when people call your house phone in the morning and they don't be calling for nothing. But uh, all right, this is a public service announcement. I am going to be making new content videos on my old YouTube channels because I got an email last night, 24 hours ago, and YouTube told me that if I want to keep this channel active, I have to keep putting new and fresh content on all my YouTube channels. So it doesn't matter if it's my old channels, new channels. Um, it's just for one channel, but eventually they're going to go to my other YouTube channels and go, you ain't been using them either, and we'll have to start adding some new content onto those channels so on my old channel from a year ago i had to delete some old videos but it wasn't that bad i mean those videos didn't get as many views no way so those we can delete and make room for this so don't be surprised if i go back to this channel and you guys be like why are we going back and forth because i have almost like five to maybe seven or eight youtube channels and I try to break them up into different categories so that way if one fills up space. So it's just until I figure out what to do with that channel. So it's back, but in order to get it, you know, back, you know, 100 percent, I have to keep keep doing it. All right. This one's in the category and this one is to show the accomplishments of BBW women in modeling, television and in film. And I guess I'll have to include sports in here, um, which might lead into a future video. But we'll put that in the title for anyone that might want to see different topics in the one video. It's December, right? So I guess Christmas has come early. Um, now, this one is going to be quite interesting. This one's going to be talking about the accomplishments of BBW women. You know, that's the one group that we did not um, say thank you to. So I actually owe the BBW women not one, not two. I actually owe the BBW women actually three videos. And then we can't finish off 2020 without making a video for... Um, the nerds and the golf because I haven't made a video for them in a long time either. So before this year's finished, we're going to be making some more thank you videos for the people that I did not say um, thank you to. I might have done it back in the summertime, but I also made some thank you videos last month for Thanksgiving. But we're still going to have to make some more videos. So we're not finished. All right, coming in at number six is Jill Scott. Now, there's a lot of black men that find her very physically sexually attractive. You know, she represents what black women is in black culture. She's been in movies, television. Um, she's popped out like five or six or seven albums and she's a contender you know and she can hold her own with anyone like she surprised me when she appeared I think in maybe a season of Black Lightning like I was shocked that she actually played a villain from a television show and she showed her incredible acting range you know it's not Black Panther I know that for a fact. Um, and it's not Luke Cage. It's actually Black Lightning. Like, I was surprised that she was in the show. Like, I, I didn't even know it was her until I took a closer look. I'm like, that's Jillian Scott. Like, oh, my God. You know, I've seen her movies. I've seen her in the Tyler Perry movies. And I think that's where she truly shines as an actress, not just as an actress, not just somebody that's rich and famous, but somebody as a black woman. She shows you the positives of being a black woman and she's had her issues in the past where people have made fun of her because she was big but you see they find her very physically sexually attractive now don't you You see them asking her out to lunch and dinner now don't you so apparently something went correct and she's on this list because you just can't make a list without including her onto the list she's made her contributions to television film and in the music industry and she's not showing no signs of slowing down. I mean, 
I mean, who knows? They could make a movie of Oprah and you could probably get Jill Scott to play Oprah. I mean, anything's possible. She can play multiple characters. She's even appeared in some of those television shows that you see on cable, you know? So she, she's got acting range and she's starting to get into the producing, the writing. She'd have wrote some books. I didn't even know she was doing all of that. She'd have made herself executive producer of all her movies and television shows because she got put up on gang by Tyler Perry, you know, so you better watch a film director or producer in the near future. Coming in at number five is going to be Roba, sorry if I butcher her name, Robima Laria. Um, Basically, she's from Australia, and she's basically a Australian plus size model, which well, that uh, you, you learn something new every day. Now, she's an exotic beauty. Now, she's been in small parts of movies, television shows, and a lot of men find her very physically sexually attractive. Like, they always said that BBW women, you know, are not good looking. Well, this woman, this woman proves everybody wrong because apparently guys are asking for her phone number guys are asking her out guys is you know taking her out to lunch and dinner and she's dating the best available men in hollywood you don't get to that level unless men find you physically sexually attractive so apparently she's doing something correct because she's from australia and she's modeled for like seven different promotions and she's found her way in commercials television and film and she modeling career launched her into the spotlight this woman is not just dating hollywood actors this woman's dating this woman's being asked out to lunch and dinner by football players professional basketball players soccer players film directors screenwriters is asking this woman out to lunch and dinner and this woman is a plus size model from australia so it's kind of like i didn't even know australia you know was like that you know everyone is thinking everyone's going to be like um, all those other actresses and she turned out to be different, but it worked because she has this exotic look. And when you see how beautiful and attractive this woman is from Australia, you forget that she's actually plus size. So apparently something had to go work, you know, so she's on the list. Coming in at number four is Brooke Elliott. Sorry if I butchered the last name. This one is somebody who also is a model too. Um, And she basically um, is better known as a plus size model, which um, a lot of her pictures, she don't look plus size. But when you get a closer look and you start to, you know, see, you'd be like, oh, man. And again, this woman has broken barriers and she came in like late late 90s early 2000s and she popped up on a lot of those television shows a lot of those modeling agent shows she actually popped up now she's wrote three books she's popped up in movies television shows um and she's even had her own modeling agency and she's even became executive producer and this woman is making power moves um and basically this woman has been asked out to lunch and dinner by everyone professional football players basketball players screenwriters film directors and to me it would not be a complete list without including her on to the list all right coming in at number three is ashley graham the by far the most well-known plus size woman in the game very physically sexually attractive popped up on sports illustrated magazine something that they say would never happen in 35 or 40 or 50 years of the magazine's history it it actually happened she they she actually broke ground she did something that was never done in the 70s the 80s the 90s the early 2000s they would never do it and from out of nowhere the magazine sold out i remember they had like three magazine covers. I remember they had Serena Williams, Ronald Rousey, and they had her on there. And that one sold out. It sold out to the point where when I wanted to buy one, there was like, you're going to have to wait two months for the magazine to come back in stock. That's how bad it sold out. Men went to show up in line. Now, you would think women would come to take a picture and get an autograph with Ashley Graham. Instead, I remember when they did bring her to Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, and all those other places to take pictures and get autographs. 
they had two lines. One was for the women, and one's for was for the guys. And I was like, "What's going on?" And it was like Ashley Graham, the the plus size models here. And I didn't really get to meet her in person because it was too big of a line. And she was like going to different parts of L.A. Like there was Century City, um, there was the Grove. I know because I would eventually work there years after that. And men were just were just were um happy and if you had a girlfriend or a wife then your wife or girlfriend would have probably been upset because guys were checking her out and guys were taking pictures and it became a big deal all of a sudden it became a big deal because it broke out in the news story every news channel was talking about it and this gave her a big platform because she started her own youtube channel she got into the movies and television shows she wrote books she popped up in commercials and then she started getting into the modeling agency television shows and she started having her own show and she kind of became this huge figure that all women would look up to that she embodied her courage, that she wasn't afraid that she was bigger than everybody else. And the fact that she just owned it, that she just took it on. It was like they were comparing her to Marilyn Monroe and Anna McCoe Smith because she was on that level and she was promoting and wearing guest jeans and all of the clothes designers would call her. And she had her pick of who she wanted to work with as a designer. And to me, she kind of embodies that and that representation. All right, and coming in at number two is another one. This one's very hard to pronounce, so please don't laugh and make fun of me. Um, it's the way that they put it on Wikipedia. I've checked like eight different sources. This one is Violet D'Amour. Um, sound like a French name, if you ask me. And basically, she's been in the game for like two and a half decades. Now, her rise to fame is that she started in the late 90s, early 2000s, and she as the story goes, because I wasn't there, and according to the research that I found, there's like seven or eight or different sources that she was trying, at one time she was a model, but then she became a plus size model, and the one that by far on record, she's like 300 pounds, and I remember going into a store one day, this is like when I got my second or third job, and I saw a magazine, and she was on the front cover of that magazine, and this one sold out to the point where every single month they had to keep restocking the magazine shelves. Like this woman was big and there was my, like at first I thought they were making a big deal out of it. And then when I found out that she was um, being taken out to lunch and dinner by film directors and screenwriters, I was blown away. This woman has broken barriers. This woman also done some stuff in the modeling industry that hadn't been done before they, you know, they always said women would ne like that would never, would never survive. She's, she's proven people wrong. She's proved critics wrong because men find her very physically, sexually attractive and they'll over exaggerate, blow it out of proportion. She's 300 pounds and you get the football players like she fine. She good looking to me and, you know, she broken barriers like she opened the door for the next generation to come in and basically do whatever they want and her doing modeling led into other avenues she got into the movies she got into the television shows she wrote books and she eventually got her fame that way and pretty much she has been she's even designed her own clothes I don't think you've, I mean, there might have been maybe two or three people before her who designed clothes, but she designed clothes and the clothes just sell like hotcakes. And I'm surprised because when you do a lot of research, they don't just be models. Like they be models and then they get into other professions later on in their career that lead to something much bigger. And she was on TV for a while. And when I saw her on TV, I didn't even know who she was. Like, I would see her in these magazines, but I didn't know who she was. And people was like, you don't know who that is? I was like, no. well, I don't be following celebrities like that. And it was like, well, you need to do your research, you know, so we got to have her on the list. And this woman is so very physically, sexually attractive that she's an exotic beauty. She can speak multiple languages, you know, so it's like that's even more attractive for a woman. So you got to you got to show this woman some mad respect. All right. Coming in at number one is going to be Nia Jax. Now, a lot of y'all probably don't know this, but Nia Jax 
um, was a plus size model before she did professional wrestling. Oh yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people just see that she does professional wrestling. But to me, it's kind of like a a tragedy because she had a lot of promise and a lot of potential to do modeling. You know, because you can see she's an exotic beauty. She's mixed with three or four different nationalities. Yes, it's the Rock's cousin. And she is the, you know, she was women's champion. And she's been doing professional wrestling for the past 10 years. And to me, to me, if they were to have a beauty contest right now, and they asked me right now, out of all the women on the list, who you think is by far the most exotic and the most physically sexually attractive I would probably say Nia Jax, not just because I watch her as a professional wrestler and I have a big, big, big crush on her as a wrestling fan. But if you were to talk about exotic beauty, I would probably say she's number one. So she gets number one because it is well deserved. Most black women um, that are BBW get overlooked a lot of times and never seem to get the respect and credit that they deserve. This is just one video, so nobody should really get angry and take it personal. There'll be future videos of these in the future. Um, until then, next time, peace.